This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. I hope you all are prepared emotionally because tonight begins a stretch of two times in three island games where we get to watch the Indianapolis Colts in prime time. That begins tonight with the Colts and the Steelers. We're going to break down that game from a betting perspective, let you know where we're seeing value in traditional markets, player props, touchdown props, and more to hopefully finish up week 12 on a high note for you by talking to Ryan Williams. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and numberfire.com. My name is Jim Sutton. Honest, I am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com. Joined here once again by Ryan Williams. Check him out on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. And Ryan, I was kind of bummed initially that the Colts were on both Monday night and then Sunday night next week. But then I remembered that having the Colts there means we get Bengals Chiefs on the main slate for DFS in the afternoon. So I think it's actually a worthwhile trade off. So I'm in a good mood. How are you doing today? Yeah, I mean, that's definitely a trade-off that we'd be willing to have. Um, It's also fun that we get to, you know, kind of pinpoint some things with the Indianapolis Colts that we want to target, um, which is is always nice when we don't have to do much guesswork, I should say. Um, But but yeah, I mean, anytime that we can, you know, you sacrifice... Sacrifice the islands for, you know, some enjoyable stuff on the main slate, especially compared to the main slate that we just got off of um, after the Thanksgiving slate, which ended up being, you know, not great for my DFS bankroll, but it was amazing. Awful game. for me. Yeah. Awful. Terrible. For me. Terrible. Yeah. But but we digress, Jim. We digress. Yeah. We're here to talk about <laughs> close out week 12 here. Um, but no. Yeah, I think I think this is a one that sets up uh, in an interesting manner for sure for Monday night. Yeah, interesting is not a bad word for it, because honestly, like this is like it's not an exciting game, but like I'm kind of intrigued by Kenny Pickett. I'm kind of I I always like watching Jonathan Taylor. He's pretty fun. Uh, George Pickens, always a candidate to do something wild. Najee Harris has actually been kind of kind of juicy recently for the first time in since Alabama, basically. So it's not a it's not a bad slate and not a bad game for tonight. We're going to break it down, let you know where we're seeing uh, some value for tonight over at FanDuel Sportsbook and get you ready for tonight's game. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Back to five podcasts for this week with the Thanksgiving holiday in the rearview mirror Monday through Friday. Getting you set for week 13 uh, in the NFL, but also talking some college football uh, and some World Cup with Ed Fang as well. So a lot of good stuff coming up this week here on the Covering the Spread podcast feed. Make sure you're subscribed there on your favorite uh, podcast platform or over on the FanDuel YouTube page to get these as they are posted. Twisted T and FanDuel have joined forces to bring you a one-of-a-kind contest series. That gives you a chance to compete for your share of thousands of dollars in site credit. Introducing Twisted T's College Football Picks, a sports betting focused contest series that's entirely free to play. The contest is simple. Each college football game will be assigned money lines, spread, and total markets with assigned points to each market. All you have to do is make six selections based on those three markets and earn points for each correct selection you made. If at the end of the day, your score ranks among the best in the contest, you'll be eligible for your share of site credit. Head to FanDuel.com slash Twisted Tea Picks and make your picks. And remember, please drink responsibly. Let's focus now on this Steelers at Colts game right now. We got the the spread at two and a half. The total for this game is a 39 and a half. We'll talk about those markets in a bit. But Ryan, when you look at this game, what's the overall top down view for you of Steelers at Colts? Yeah, this is one that, you know, for me, just uh, from the top down view, screams under. I mean, anytime that we get two running backs like this and the way that they're utilized in offenses and just the way that these teams go about trying to get points um, is not great. You're also looking at, I mean, the, the Colts, I think they rank like 20th or right around that range in DVOA, which, you know, doesn't really jump off the page, but has been better um, under Jeff Saturday. And then you look at a Pittsburgh Steelers team that since TJ Watt's been back, they're top 10 in DVOA. I mean, he really has helped this offense um, tremendously. There's also an, an interesting stat out there. I think it's only been like two times since the beginning of last season um, that the Steelers have scored 30 points. Um, They just did so last week against the Bengals. They've lost both 
games <laughs> where they've scored 30 points. Um, and, and you know, that's that's just unheard of. So you you prefer if you're taking any side of the Steelers, um, like myself, I'm taking the two and a half. You don't want this to be a shootout game because they haven't shown um, in the past two seasons that they've been good in that manner. But, uh, you know, I do think that T.J. Watt has definitely helped out. Um, I do think that there's something that Kenny Pickett has shown us there. Matt Ryan hasn't shown me enough. Um, Jeff Saturday being there, it's been a good story. I think this is on his, uh, you know, we, we are getting him on an island game here at Network, Jeff Saturday, as we like to say. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if there's enough here in the tank for the Colts to kind of pull this one off. Yeah, I think that I'm curious to see what the philosophical approach is. I think we know what the what the Colts are going to do. They're going to try to run the football as often as they can. And honestly, like if I had Matt Ryan in 2022 as my quarterback, I'd probably be doing the exact same. He's better than Sam Ellinger, but he got benched for a reason. And like, so I think that their approach and being very run heavy makes a lot of sense. I'm worried. I'm curious though what the Steelers do offensively because the Colts rush defense, as they showed last week against Philly, for the most part, they were very good in that game. That last drive, they didn't do as much, but like they were good overall. So I'm curious does Pittsburgh kind of go a bit more aerial attacky in this game? They haven't been bad, yeah. uh, like <clears throat> passing. So I wouldn't be, I don't think it'd be a bad thing if they did, but I also wouldn't be shocked if they did. I just think that's that, that side of the ball, the Steelers offense, I'm having a bit harder time getting a firm grasp on personally. Yeah. I mean, I, I actually like it from, from that standpoint. I mean, Najee yeah. Harris just came off of a game where he rushed for two touchdowns in the first time in his career. Um, so, you know, I, no, that's rushing for two touchdowns. I know he's had, well, he had his, he had like his first, before. he had the longest rush of his career two weeks ago. I think it was like 36 yards. So we're, we're checking right. a lot of first for Najee Harris here. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but you know, I, I do think that he sets up pretty interestingly, just the fact of the usage that he's going to see, which mm -hmm. I guess we can touch on a little bit, but yeah, I, I do. Th I mean, listen, this is, this is where we get to the part of the season where we start to see handcuffs taken off of guys, especially, you know, with the Steelers trying to see what they have in Kenny Pickett. And I mean, what better way than to showcase this kid on Monday night football um, in front of, you know, a national televised audience and, and just, try and let it rip he has the pieces to do so um and this is you know probably the better way to beat the Colts so let's see what he's got yeah so let's talk about those Steelers uh you mentioned that you have uh the Steelers plus two and a half that is a bet we mentioned on uh Wednesday's show last week I'm throwing a bit of value on the Steelers money line right now plus 122 I've not bet that yet personally I likely will not um I think that is the right side though if you were to bet this game I think that if you're going to bet this game either take the points with the Steelers or take the money line. I think both those pretty viable games like this can land on two decently often. So I think there is value in taking the points opposed to taking the money line. If you want to go that way, I would go money line personally, if I were to bet it, but probably not going to get there. You mentioned the under two at 39 and a half uh, being your preferred route. Let's talk about the Steelers specifically here, because again, no Jalen Warren here. Najee Harris has shown some burst. We've seen the Steelers passing offense for a couple of games now with no Chase Claypool. And like it's been pretty concentrated. So what do you see on the Steelers side as far as uh, props that you like tonight? Yeah, I think. We, well, first, let's just talk about Najee and mm -hmm. the way that he's going to be utilized in this game and seeing all the work like in the receiving game in in the in rushing. Um, I think his uh if I'm not mistaken, I saw his rushing and receiving prop at around 86 and a half. And, you know, you're looking at the past couple of games and the coats. I mean, even with Jeff Saturday there, um, Philly wasn't able to get there with the running backs, but Jalen Hurts was able to, you know, put up a decent rushing performance against them. Josh Jacobs just two weeks ago um, got over 100 yards rushing and receiving um, against this team. So we definitely like the way that this sh shapes up for Najee Harris. The other guy that we got to look at, which I don't think that the book has appropriately caught up to what Pat Fryermuth is doing in this offense. Um, I mean, outside of the target totals, just when you're looking at his receiving props, like, yeah, he had 37 yards two games ago. But like, other than that, this guy's been smashing the number of 46 and a half where he's currently listed at. And, you know, I, I think there's merit to get alternate lines on him. I mean, you're looking at plus money if you just take over 50 receiving yards um, on the alt line for Pat Fryermuth. He's involved between the 20s. He's involved in the red zone. I think he's incredible. I have a fun uh, first touchdown bet with Pat Fryermuth as well, 12 to 1 there. You know, we love oh, wow. the tight ends and the quarterbacks um, at, at first glance. 
And then I think we just got to talk about George Pickens too when we're talking about the Steelers side. I mean, he has been, you know, the alpha wide receiver here, um, despite, you know, Deontay Johnson of what we saw a year ago with him being the target hog with Big Ben. Um, George Pickens is that guy for Kenny Pickett. I mean, when the, when they need a long third down conversion, when he needs, you know, when Pratt Farmuth is covered and he needs somebody else, he's looking to George Pickens there. So I think getting action on George Pickens where he comes in at, uh, right now, which is around the 43 and a half, right 43 now. and a half. Yeah. yeah. At minus 113. I think we got to look at that as well, too. And I think the fun thing is you're talking about some yardage props that actually does tie in pretty well with the one prop that I thought stood out to me in this market, which was uh, Kenny Pickett over 213 and a half passing yards for this game. And it is it does tie into what I was talking about before, where I feel like they're probably going to have a hard time running the football here. Um, that doesn't disqualify the Najee rushing plus receiving one because 82 and a half is like a pretty fair number because you get a lot of work in the passing game. Um, I think they could struggle to run and that could lead to some decent yardage numbers for Pickett. Now, the yardage for Pickett this year has not been outstanding. He has topped uh, 213 in just three games so far, but he left that Jets game early. Um, he left, I believe, the Bucks game early as well. There's something funky in that game. He said it in two of the past four games, so it's not like he's smashing this number by any means. But it is a situation where they're playing indoors. That's a positive, as always. It is a bit of a run funnel where they encourage you to pass against them as opposed to run against them. And he does throw downfield. And you mentioned, you know, long throws to, to George Pickens. That can boost up yardage, pro, yardage totals in a pretty big hurry. So I think if I'm looking at the Steelers side here, if I did want to dive in, I'd probably be looking at Kenny Pickett over 213 and a half. I think that's a good number to get him at. And it does tie in well to the, the Friar Muth and uh, Pickens thought processes for you. Because again, targets are pretty tight in this offense in a good way uh, with no Chase Claypool in the fold. Yeah. No, I, I I think that's I think that's incredible. And I mean, it, again, we're talking about concentrated offenses and being able to quote unquote predict where the ball is going, yeah. so to speak. And I mean, the Steelers have just shown us what can he pick it out there, like where the ball is going. Like, there's no other ancillary pieces than the starters who are on the field who are getting much of the work. It's like we're just going to roll with these guys. Um, I do, and Jalen Warren just being out absolutely just opens up so much for for Najee. Yeah. Um, where they said they were, you know, they they talked about preseason of trying to limit his touches, but in a matchup like this, um, I think they'll just you know try and give him as much as he can handle. Yeah, I don't think they have a lot of leeway to be reserved with him by any means. Let's move now over to the Colts side of things. They've been very run heavy with Jeff Saturday, but they also just broadly been more functional than they were, which I think is a good thing. Now, you mentioned the TJ Watt factor, and TJ Watt is a force. And that could, I think, give us some pause in the Colts in general, because my initial inclination, Ryan, was looking at uh, the Jonathan Taylor rushing plus receiving prop. That's one of two and a half. And... I was like initially like, okay, they're gonna be very run heavy. It's not a very good rush defense, but they've been a lot better in the games TJ Watt has been active. I know he's like a pass rusher, but like he has a ripple, a trickle down effect. So I couldn't talk myself into any Colts props. Uh, were there any that stood out to you here? Yeah, I think the the one piece that really is sticking out to me, Jim, is Paris Campbell. Um, yeah. The way that he's been utilized these past couple of games with the Matt Ryan resurgence um, has been absolutely incredible. I mean, even like you're talking about leading the team um, in red zone targets, leading the team in pretty much every receiving category that there is. And he comes in at 42 and a half, which seems like mm -hmm. a fair number, um, especially when you're talking about the front seven of this defense for Pittsburgh. If they're, you know, giving some problems, Matt Ryan, you know, we've seen him throw, you know, 37, 40, over 40 times before. This mm -hmm. could be a matchup at home. Um, if Jonathan Taylor's not able to get going where they rely on Matt Ryan in that way, um, I'm trying to look at the pass catching pieces. Um, you know, Michael Pittman has had a pretty consistent yet quiet year. Um, he's had it. His biggest game on the season, I believe, 130 yards against Jacksonville. Um, hasn't caught a touchdown since week one. Um, so I think there's merit to getting Paris Campbell 
um, at three to one on the anytime touchdown as well, too. I just really like the way that they've been utilizing him in this offense. And, you know, shout out to Paris Campbell, too, who's been a guy who's been littered on the injury reports the past couple of years. It's nice to see him healthy and be out there and, and, and going out and performing like a lot of people in the industry thought that he once could. Um, outside of that, I mean, there's really no other pieces that stand out to me. Um, the tight end position for the Colts has been gross all year. You know, you can't really trust any of those guys. Um, I do think there's merit in um, if we're looking at passing yards, um, like you said, 236 there, 236 and a half for Matt Ryan. I think if you want to take like most passing yards in the game, he is favored over Kenny Pickett. But I think that's probably the right lane to go as well, too, if he wants some action in this game. Um, outside of that, it, it's pretty gross. I don't really like the Jonathan Taylor props. I mean, we're looking at over yeah. 100 yards for rushing and receiving from him. I'd probably it, it feels gross because of. Jonathan Taylor, he can do anything on an on island saying and make you feel um, like an idiot about it. But I'm, I'm willing to take the, the under there. And maybe it's just an under on the rushing yards as they have him at 83 and a half. So, yeah, I could see him getting over, you know, whatever it is, 16 and a half um, on his receiving prop. Right. And that would be fine. Yeah. Uh, going back to Paris Campbell, I think that when you think about the Steelers defense, they've been a very good defense for a very long time. Their kind of key flaw has been guys who move around the formation. Um, they can get them in, in key matchup situations. This has been true since like, I don't know, like early 2010s. This has been a thing against Steelers. And that is kind of the area where Paris Campbell operates. You mentioned the, the target hole he's had with Matt Ryan. It's been very good. They seem like they've developed a nice rapport. He's healthy, which is pretty fun. Um, I think that's all pretty encouraging. So uh, the yardage one you mentioned, 42 and a half, and the anything the touchdown for Paris Campbell is three to one. Let's open up other touchdown bets here. You talked about Pat Fryermuth, uh, first touchdown, 12 to one. Paris Campbell at three to one. Any others you like uh, for the touchdown markets for tonight? Yeah, I think th those are my two favorites. Um, I'm I'm always willing to get at uh, George Pickens. He's three to one as well, three ten um, on the on the money there. Um, if you're looking at him outside of that, I can't really get behind any of these other ancillary pieces to, to score. That's just I just don't think that's plus EV um, to be doing. But I will say that Kenny Pickett anytime touchdown which it, it's really gross that they don't have it better than this, but that just goes to show you the state of the Pittsburgh running back situation. Yeah. Kenny Pickett's plus 550 to score an anytime touchdown. He actually is tied with Najee Harris for a lead on the <laughs> team with rushing touchdowns at three. Um, Najee just tied him with his two touchdown performance last week. So, I mean, you know, if they get – Five or five or closer. Um, you're you're thinking about maybe you could see Kenny Pickett try and sneak in there um, and and really get some action on that. But other than that, those are really the, actually I will say this: Pittsburgh Steelers defense at nine to one, oh. or defense and special teams, I guess nine to one to score a touchdown there. Um, we have not seen Matt Ryan turn the ball over in quite some time, but to start the season, we know that he was making mistakes and making them in abundance and you know this is again we're talking about tj watt we're talking about what this defense can do um would it surprise us if matt ryan you know threw a pick six in the situation or if the Seals were able to get a fumble recovery i mean this defense just is so opportunistic and gets over on plays like that so nine to one for pittsburgh steelers as well i like that yeah they got tj watt back make if it's patrick had an appendectomy and then played 100% of the snaps like 10 days later, which is absurd to think about. Like, I couldn't work out for like a month after I had my appendectomy, and this dude's out here playing every – he played 66 snaps last week. It's just – Minka's Mink built a little differently than you, Jim. Slightly? A little bit? You know, I, I, you know, you look in the mirror and you're like, huh, which one is it? It's a little, little Spider-Man <laughs> Mimi, but, you know, I agree that there are slight differences. You can tell the difference uh, oh, at yeah. times. We're twins, but our mothers dress us differently. Uh, <laughs> the one that I looked into, couldn't talk myself into, I thought about Alec Pierce plus 480 anytime touchdown because Alec Pierce is okay. like a, a good football player who gets downfield work, and I thought maybe I could talk myself into that. The reason I didn't wind up pulling the trigger is because, A, he doesn't get a lot of red zone work, just four red zone targets so far this year for Alec Pierce. Um, his primary function is kind of just being a field stretcher. Um, and, like, that's a valuable role to have, but it's not going to be great. He, I guess, like, if I had to give him a comp, it's kind of he's kind of playing a Donovan Peoples-Jones sort of role uh, for this indie team where he's getting downfield, getting some yardage, 
but it's not going to lead a lot of touchdowns. Like I don't, I don't think DPJ scored this year until last week. So he's kind of playing that kind of role, which isn't great for touchdowns. So if I were to look at the Pierce props, I think the better way to go would probably be in the receiving market is there aren't any markets posted for Alec Pierce, which is a little bit annoying. Um, but like, <laughs> I, I I thought about it, Ryan, at plus 480, couldn't quite get there. Um, I think the Pickens shout out, though, is a good one. He is uh, plus 310, and like you watch that guy play, and it's like, yeah, he's just he's built to be a touchdown machine. So I thought about Pierce, but couldn't quite get there myself. Cool. Yeah, no, he was, he's a great pick for this. Too, so you, you think that the future is bright. But yeah, Alec Pierce is interesting. I think any of the receiver options have some merit to them when you're looking at the Steelers defense, allowing 21 passing touchdowns, um, which is third in the league. And just knowing that the Chiefs and Cardinals are ahead of them and did have a game yesterday. So um, that's where that number is coming from. Um, so the, yeah, they've been pretty much porous all year um, when it comes to stopping quarterbacks from finding the end zone via the air. Um, How so crazy any the with, Chiefs are that high? That's absurd. That's wild. Right? I didn't realize that they had let up that many. <laughs> well, and, they, they, and we've seen this with them, and I don't want to go on a tangent too much here, but just with the ah, Chiefs, we, we've seen this time and time again with this defense. Like, they they really buckle down when it comes to red zone rushing yeah. efficiency. Um, and it, yeah. it's just so hard to run on this team, like, inside the 20. Um, and, and they really just – are they dare you to just beat them through the air, and teams have – you know, they're always throwing because they're always from behind and that's what they need to yeah. do. Um, and they have been giving up the big play. So, yeah, that that is surprising, but then also not surprising um, when you think about the numbers and how the Chiefs play. I did take over 51 for that game next week for the Chiefs and Bengals. So if they were to continue to be bad in the red zone against the pass, I'm not going to complain. That's uh, oh, that's told. just one more week. Chase back, so we love yeah. that. Let's boogie. Let's boogie. All righty. That is all that we have here for this game for the Steelers and the Colts. Again, interesting game, despite the fact it might not have the two sexiest teams. Still some fun stuff to look at. I think some fun uh, props as well. Do not forget to make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts, both on your favorite podcast platform, but also on the FanDuel YouTube page. World Cup stuff coming up uh, tomorrow. We've got college football in a big week coming up. And plenty more to come uh, throughout this week here on Covering the Spread. Ryan, appreciate the time as always. Hope you had a fantastic Thanksgiving. We'll talk to you once again Thursday to break down a really fun Week 13 slate. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having me as always, Jim. Good luck, everybody. Can't wait to get after it with you next week, Jim. All righty. Follow Ryan on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. Good luck to all of you tonight. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down some World Cup and get my first look at NFL week number 13. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 